Hmm. Let me think. What's um? What's the map? Cliffside. Cliffside is the map. There's no water in this map, so we're all gonna be playing on land. Let's think about the comp. We are playing China, booming Civ, together with Malians, kind of UA94. booming Civ too. Pangaro is such a nice dude. I trained with him a couple days ago, like eight games in a row, to find a proper build as Otto against English fast aggression. He is such a Chad. Sorry to interrupt you. Don't worry, don't worry. It is fine if you guys interrupt me to say such nice uh, things. Okay, so China and Malians are a good, are a good uh, combination. Not really. Why? Well, because China usually wants to go for a second TC, right? It's not like we see China going fast castle. It's not like we really see China push pushing on on one TC. Like not really. China usually goes for a second TC, especially when playing team games. And Malians are gonna be cow booming. So who's gonna defend us? We're playing against Ottomans and Japanese. They both could play aggressively in feudal. So we have to be very careful about the team comp that we pick. If you guys have noticed, every time I play team games, I before picking my save, I think about what my ally has picked, right? And I always go like, what's better here? What's better here for this map? What uh, synergizes better with my ally's pick? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to win the game, sometimes you got to go for that one save that works well together with your allies sieve rather than the sieve that i feel more comfortable playing with or the one that i feel like playing i mean if you want to win right okay so malians in, in chinese we open up with the pit mine front you got two pit mines. whenever you have two pit mines like this and you and you may suffer the risk of getting early early aggression i don't really suggest you going for the other landmark the sahara saharian landmark but in this scenario you might as well think about it because um with one single landmark you are defending two gold mines if it happens that you go you get one here and one there then maybe you want to go for the uh, the other one the um, what's the same The Mansa Quarry, okay. I rarely go for the Saharan Trade Network, rarely. But if this is the case, like this is my spawn, maybe placing it here mm, might help you defend those two uh, those two mines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got orange in front of you. That's um, ornaments. You don't really want to be building those houses very far away from your TC. I mean, they're. Even if you build them here, they're going to still be out of the TC range. But, you know, like he's going to come with the Spearman. So, maybe. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. You went up to 10 villagers on food. Now you're sending villagers onto wood. That's fine. I think I go up to 11 villagers on, on food. Yeah, this is what we expected. That first, um, so, that first uh, spearman. Now, what do we do here? What do we do here? We got the resources for feudal. We're aging up. And now, I don't need to age up with six villagers here. I need to age up with four villagers. I don't really need to rush that feudal timing. Why? Why is that? What am I going to get from feudal, like, rushing feudal? What am I going to get? New technologies that I'm not going to make use of for now. Mm, having that passive income a bit earlier on. Okay, that's useful, but is that going to help me defend this? Archers for the Spearman. Yeah, that's why you want to kind of rush um, Fetal. But are you going to have... Well, you might have the wood for the archer range. Let's take a look. You, the, the, my point here is you don't want to be putting too many villagers onto the age up because then you're not gathering resources with them, right? And you only have four villagers on food, so that means that you're not going to be able to produce archers and, and villagers. You might have the, the wood for the archery range, but you're definitely not going to be able to produce archers and villagers at the same time. Because you know that four villagers on sheep are the minimum amount of villagers in order to keep constant villager production. 
So you should at least leave one or two extra villagers on food. Send the rest on to wood and have like four villagers, maybe five. Aging up. Most efficient aid job is with four villagers. That's a fact. No, that's a fact. Most efficient aid job is with four villagers. Good scouting pattern. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is he going? This looks like this looks like H1. This looks like a trademark. Sorry, trade post a post. The trading landmark. He's going to the corner here. Yeah, that's a trade landmark. 100 <laughs> percent Look at that. So that's good. We now know what to do, how to harass. He's gonna be he's gonna be Ottoman trading early on. It's not it's not a good idea. Do, do never trade early on as Ottomans, okay? Again, uh, traders are very expensive and it's not like Ottomans get a bonus from trading until later on when they got those Vizier points that allow uh, allow them to like get more, I don't know, more gold or something. I don't know. But that's like late game stuff. You don't want to be trading with Ottomans early on, okay? So this is good with you. This is good for you. Why? Well, because he's going to be spending his resources on trading and not harassing you. And second, because if you go see Bahi, sorry, um, if you go um, sofas, you will you will be able to harass his food sources because he will have to go out for food. He's not going to have uh, food at base. He's not going to have the um, the berries landmark. So that gives you an opportunity to harass. Okay, your feudal got that uh, that archery range. Okay. Okay, I wouldn't, now that I've seen that he's trading, I would leave my scout around his base. Okay, I would leave my scout around his base and see whether uh, he's adding military uh, buildings or not. Because if he's like focused on his booming approach, going for traders, may even, maybe even getting a second TC, like people want like to do those things, I don't really need to be producing any units here. And I can make use of... of these many like six villagers i don't really need 12 vill villagers on foot i can put these villagers onto wood and start adding quickly cow farms around my tc you see i don't really need to be spending too many resources on military units if i'm not going to have an aggression soon okay we don't know yet let's take a look okay you're seeing three villagers on gold why well because he wants to produce traders so that's fine you should go around his base and see Okay, you stop military production. Whenever my opponent, when playing Malians or when playing uh, a booming save, any other booming save like ABBA, like China, okay, whenever I see my opponent going for a booming approach, I have free access to that second and juicy pit mine or second TC, okay. I can be greedy myself because my opponent is being greedy. So it's going to be, it's all going to be about who's greedier and who makes the best out of uh, our, each of our approaches, right? So in my case, as Malians, I want to pick a couple uh, villagers, maybe place a wall over here, right? To kind of secure my, my second pit mine and drop that second pit mine. If I don't want to go for that one because it, it might be a bit too exposed, I have another one over here. Okay. But the key here, the key is to understand that I'm not being, I'm not being attacked in the short term. So I can go for an economic approach for those cows, for that second pit mine. Okay, having a second pit mine allows me to have less amount of uh, villagers on gold, have them on on wood, and still receive a lot of gold from uh, passively from the pit mine that I'm going to be using to get cows out. Okay. Also, very important when playing team games, you have to inform. I don't know because I, I can't really see the uh, um, the alerts here, the pinks. But you have to let your ally know that he's trading. So you ping, bong, 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 you ping on the trade. Hey, note that this guy is trading. Okay, just for you to to know basically. 
You want to go for a set for double TC and let this guy trade? Fine, but you have to inform. Okay, always inform. Communication is key in team games. Um, let me take a look at your upgrades. Not one. Okay, you got peak. You got. Um, broad axe, go for horticulture, go for wheelbarrow. Why? You're you're gonna have a lot of um, gold income, so don't be afraid of spending it. And horticulture um, affects uh, cow farms too. It increases the amount of food that they provide passively, so you want to get that too. Okay. And wheelbarrow, obviously, wheelbarrow is a must always. So don't be afraid to go for those four economic upgrades as soon as you can. This villager goes out for walling, I think, yeah. By placing your scout here and holding position with B, with B, the scout won't move and the villager won't be able to keep walling. Ah, uh, you did that? Okay. What are these? Samurai? Okay. Not a big deal. You've, you've got, you're, you're moving to this other wood line, which is outside well it's not it's not outside um out of the range but you got this one totally in range okay see now you you will have you have to move your villagers again just you just go on to this one right away from here to this one um okay you have a lot of resources yet you only have one um production building what are you going to do once you hit uh, Castle H? Your economy is amazing. You're sitting on two pit mines. You got three, four full cow ranches. One almost full. And you're getting the last one also completed. You are going to need a lot of production buildings. You have to think one step ahead. Not only one step ahead of your opponent, but also one step ahead of, of yourself. Okay, I know it is hard to keep up with all the things that you have to do, but these are this is an RTS game. It, it's all about having a list of things to do and completing them one by one. So, bum bum, I'm going castle. Am I ready for castle? That's what I have to question myself. Am I ready to ca for castle age? Well, I do have the resources, but do I have the infrastructure to sustain my castle age? Nope. So, I might need to send some villagers on to wood and start adding more production buildings you always want to have you always you always want to have um when playing malians and going for this cow boom you even if you have like a, a bunch of um cow ranches you always want to have like six to eight villagers on food until you get like level two horticulture. Okay. Don't send everything onto wood or, or gold. Because you're gonna need that little boost from those six to eight villagers on, on food. See an early wall here would have prevented you from idling those villagers. Again, boys, don't be afraid of dropping early walls. Like early and short walls are very effective and very and 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 very useful. Okay, so they're playing Tibahi and mainly samurai. I saw here. You're adding barracks. Okay, I guess you're going for Musufani. Okay, a lot of vital villagers. So who went castle? You went castle, your ally went castle, and Ottomans were went castle too. You've only seen four Sibahi from the Ottoman player. What does that mean? That this guy has not been producing military units. This guy, I'm sure this guy has. I'm not I'm not sure if he has a second TC, but he's gonna have a lot of traders here. And that is very risky and very dangerous. Okay, you have to go there and deny trade as soon as you can. Or just push him. But your objective should be denying that trade line. Because if you let that go on for a few more minutes, minute 14, they're going to be rich. Rich men, and you will have nothing to do. 
be careful with this. These guys are like getting wood from the other side of the wood line. Okay, your castle. Not veteran units sitting on 1.5k gold. Not veteran units. Let me see what you're producing. Archers, not, veter not veteran. Donso's not veteran. Are you getting the upgrades here? Okay, you're getting them. Mutsufari and Harden Donso. Okay. Look at your resources. That's why. That's what I meant by adding more infrastructure, more production buildings. You need to, you need to make use of those resources. And if you don't have enough production buildings, you're going to be stacking them. This happens to me many times as well. So, it, I mean, just what did I say? What did I say? Second TC. It was kind of obvious, right? Second TC in trade. Why? Because he only had four Sipahi that probably came out of the military school. So this guy has been booming like a motherfucker. Obviously Mangonel because he's playing Ottoman. So when pushing an Ottoman player, we always have to think about that Mangonel. If we're in castle, we need a couple Springles. Otherwise, it's going to be very risky for us to push. He got all of these units for free, I can tell you. All of these units for free. He's been booming like sick. And we are not making use of our resources. Nothing being produced. Also, I'm castle. I can add another another pit mine. You can add pit mine, a pit mine on your allies gold mine, and he will still be able to gather gold from, from that gold mine. Okay. So you can you can still add a pit mine here. Okay, quick tip for everybody. I just hit castle. I just hit castle. I'm producing some military units. I'm kind of testing, seeing what my opponents have. Right? And suddenly, boom, boom. Imperial? Like, I just aged up. If you hear that sound, that means something's not going well. Uh, as it should. Go back to your base. Take a look at your resources. Oh my god, I have a lot of resources here in the bank. What should I do to make use of them? Add buildings, more villagers, get upgrades maybe. Okay, make use of those resources. All those resources that are not being spent are resources that I never gathered. Okay? Because I'm never spending them. So I'm actually wasting my time with those villagers, gathering resources, and I'm not spending them. Again, I many times bank a lot of resources, so don't feel bad. Everyone does. Just try to understand how your ship works and try to um, think one step ahead. You know that Malian Cow Boom is huge, huge. You have to be prepared for that next time. That was a good engage from your ally. Now if you keep pushing, you're going to win the game. Because they're sending everything to the battlefield. And everything that, that reaches the battlefield literally dies. You have plenty of economy. You have a good setup. Your ally's setup is also wonderful. Sitting on, two, sitting on 2 TC. Dynasty, Song Dynasty. Like this guy has a fucking thousand villagers. Well, not so many. You should have Pangoro. You should have... 120 already. 100, yeah, 120 already. So you're missing villager cycles here. <clears throat> Where's your army? Okay, here. Come on, Nuck. You're falling behind. Oh, you're here. Okay. Ooh, that's hard. Those are all samurai? Mm. Okay. A lot of... Uh, why are you gathering so much uh, stone? 
did you want to have a like build a castle or something whenever i find myself with a lot of stone and i didn't plan to gather it if i can drop a castle somewhere and deny a gold mine or or just to secure a position i do that if i don't if i don't really need it i just drop another tc because why not right if you can drop another tc and get two villagers at, at a time and increase your economy upgrade your economy like that good to go and actually you've got enough stone for a castle and a tc i think overall you guys are playing pretty nicely i would i would suggest that when playing when playing um team games you will think about where do i want to fight if i want to fight on this side of the map then I would suggest, like Bangor did very well done, um, walling off the other side. Do you think team rank is harder than solo? No. I mean, yeah, it is. It is. Well, it, it depends. But yeah, there are more factors to consider and more stuff that's going on at the same time in the map, right? So if we're planning to fight on this side of the map, then we wall the north side. If we're planning now, now that we're switching sides to defend, you should have brought a couple of villagers here and build a stone wall here and a stone wall there and maybe there okay because there are no resources are there any resources here not really okay also with malian malian is all about gold do we have relics we don't have relics drop a monastery drop a monastery start getting relics 4.2k gold Make use of that gold, my man. A lot of eco upgrades that I'm not... Whenever you, you, you're you floating a lot of gold, think about upgrades, okay? Either um, blacksmith upgrades or eco upgrades. Obviously, military units as well. I'm not sure if you guys lost this game, but he's producing mass samurai. You can produce mass Musafari warriors and archers. You don't really need job throwers. I mean, you did need you, you did need them for the Ottoman player, but not anymore, I would say. Good job. So you actually won the game. Okay, nice, nice. Nice, well done, well done. So, the only things that I would point out here is be one step ahead of yourself. Calculate how many production buildings I'm going to need to spend my re the, the resources that I'm going to be producing, I'm, I'm going to be generating in the future. Uh, always communicate with your ally. If you guys saw, there was um, there was a trade trade post, uh, trade landmark being built in the corner. Mm, perhaps you should think about denying that, raiding that trade line. So let your ally know, because many times we're not looking at the minimap and we don't realize and we take the wrong decision. Maybe if you had told um, Pangoro that uh, your opponent was going for a trade, maybe he, he would have, I don't know, maybe, maybe produce a couple horsemen or, or knights and send them to the, I don't know. Communication is key in, in team games. Is it too late for coaching? Uh, no, we can do one for you. I usually do it too, but let's do one for you, Nicholas. Um, in other than that, just everything that we've been going, uh, we've been seeing through the game, right? Uh, I think overall, you've improved a lot since last time uh, I coached you. You've improved a lot. I, I've seen that cow boom being completed all those cow farms being added you've been producing uh, army uh, like military units early on to defend your mine. so overall you played a very nice game and i think you've improved a lot uh now focus on your next steps which are making use of use of those resources and getting relics too and also think about walling okay walls are important especially in team games ua94